I am making a Battle Wasp deck profile. I am. This deck is really fun just because it's a. It seems like it's a battle based deck, but it's actually a battle based burn deck. I'll explain those that when I get to it. So I start off with the monsters. I play three copies of Dart the Hunter. This card, if a battle wasp destroys a monster, you can discard it to then deal or deal, activate a flame wing man effect where your opponent takes damage equal to the destroyed monster's attack. And if it's on your field, you can tribute to make target one other insect and make it a tuner, which is really good since this deck only has two tuners. Then I play three copies of Pin the Bullseye. He's a free summon if you control an insect and deals 200 damage per copy of himself on a field once per turn. Then I play three Sting the Poison. It is the tuner monster that has a walking effect available by tributing an insect. And when it's normal or special summon, you add a Battle Wasp. I play three Twinbow the Attacker. Twinbow is a special summon if you control an insect. But when you do, you're locked into insects for the rest of the turn. But it gets two attacks on monsters for some weird reason. But also, it, uh, it can just attack twice. And... That's more or less it about Twin Bow the Attacker. And to finish off the monsters, I play three Battle Wasp Arbalist the Rapid Fire. Arbalist is a monster born for level 3 or lower Battle Wasp, so it's normal summoned. And if it should be destroyed, then you just special summon another Battle Wasp from your hand or deck, and you can only use its effect to summon once per turn. Same so for the monsters, for the spells, I play. One reasoning since they're levels one through four. One monster reborn. Upstart. Foolish burial. Use foolish burial. Because if you see foolish burial in Arbalist, then you've already gotten Sting the Poison defense due to Arbalist's effect by sending Sting with Foolish. Foolish can then grab Twinbow or pin the Bullseye. So then you can go for a level. Or you can just then summon one of them. But these two just give you a level 6. Negro. And I play one for one so I can get... So if I have a... I can, I'm, this just lets me summon Dart the Hunter or Pin the Bullseye whenever it's needed. One right Geki since Battle Wasp. Three Dark Hole. I'm playing those because I'm only playing 15 monsters. Three Revival Swarm. This is a monster reborn that you can banish from your graveyard to one battle boss you control. And then make it so that it can't be destroyed until the end of the next turn. Then I play three Summoning Swarm. This is the battle off Soul Charge, depending on how many monsters your opponent controls. However, it is restricted to, you can only summon level 4 lower battle wasps, and it locks you into insects for, us, for the entire turn. That is it for the spells. For the traps, I play 3 battle wasp nest. The way this card works is if your opponent attacks a battle wasp monster, you can put a counter on it, end their battle phase, then summon a new battle wasp from your deck. Well, when it once has two counters on it, it is destroyed during the end phase. Then I play one solemn warning because it just helps. Three solemn judgment and three solemn strike. And that is it for the traps. The battle wasp deck isn't very good without negations. So I play a solemn card so that it has negations. And for the extra deck, I play two Great Fly. This card is great for them because it's a wind insect like the rest of the Battle Wasps. So whether you're walking to wind for some weird reason or insects, you have a Link Monster to go to. And I play three copies of Azusa the Ghost Spell. This is the other Battle Wasp tuner. And its ability is if a battle wasp it destroys a monster in your opponent's field, then you can then summon it from your graveyard in defense position. But if a battle your opponent takes damage from a battle wasp effect, then Azusa deals damage equal to that battle wasp's attack points. And you can only control one Azusa the Ghost spell because of that. 
Then I play three Battle Wasp Halberd the Charge. This card, I was surprised because I thought someone was using Dinos. I was summoned this. They said it was this fine, so I went to Battle Phase. Had attack their Tyranno. They're like, okay, you take a thousand. Then I went Damage Step Halberd's effect. Because when Halberd battles a monster that's just as strong or stronger, it cuts the attack in half. And if it destroys the opponent's monster by battle, it then deals 200 points damage for a battle wasp in the graveyard. So the main thing with battle wasp is to get Halberd the charge and as do so the ghost bone play. So then Halberd the charge deals 200 damage for every monster you're... And, but you want those two and a Dart the Hunter in hand. Because what you do is you discard Dart the Hunter to deal damage. You, what you do is you go Chain Link 1, Azusa, or Chain Link 1, however, Chain Link 2, Dart the Hunter, Chain Link 3, Azusa. So then Azusa summons herself. Your opponent takes damage equal to their destroyed monster attack. Azusa deals 100. However, deals its damage, and then Azusa deals another 25. And then continue with the extra deck after that is one Shooting Riser Dragon and Cyber Squantum Dragon. These cards are ne all, aren't are really ever summoned. I just play them because level 7 has come up a couple of times. And then I play two copies of Hama the Conquering Bow. This card's fun because if you use a Synchro Monster to summon it, so like using Sting with, with Halberd or Azusa with Twin Bow, it gets two attacks during each battle phase. And if it did, your opponent didn't take any damage by the end of the battle phase, it deals 300 damage for a battle loss from your graveyard. And I play one Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, or Crystal Wing, my bad, and two Halberd, or Arbalist Rapid Armageddon. Bullets to the Armageddon. That is it for my deck profile. If you have any.